next uh, outflow sorry inflow channel defects sometimes what happens it's not only the interventricular septum that is open this, this is the normal this is the normal in the abnormal case it's not sometimes it's not only a vsd or an asd the entire av cushion is out not there that means there is a serious defect in the formation of the endocardial cushion as a result as a result although there is a small ventricle right ventricle left ventricle right atrium left atrium technically in spite of having that structure incomplete it functionally it is still a single single chamber heart isn't it you understand all the blood finally are getting mixed in the region where the endocardial cushion was supposed to be there so this you can imagine the consequences of such a dangerous situation i hope you got the point yes sir yeah basically yes, sir. as students what i am what i want you to catch is it's not the structure that matters it is the consequence of the structure or the abnormality that matters what kind of functional consequences that can arise is the is the future of that little baby now you see again i am showing you the cross section of the heart this is the right ventricle this is the left ventricle left atrium you can see the thickness of the muscle mass then you can see the papillary muscles these are the chordae tendinae this is the cusp of the mitral valve uh, this is a very beautiful example this also shows the flow of blood you see from the left atrium it comes into the left ventricle then you see it takes a turn here and then goes into the aorta you see there is a, a sudden shift in the direction of blood flow just remember that's a very very important point and that's why when when the heart contracts the apex of the heart contracts and pushes the blood in this direction you see when it expands it sucks in the blood from the across the mitral valve but when it goes into systole it pushes this blood into the aorta into the aorta now all said and done at the end of the day the looping that i talked of in the previous uh, uh, day discussion is brought to attention right now there is an this uh, this area the line of demarcation i am now showing with a highlighter this line of demarcation is very very important because behind the line of demarcation there are two valves in front of the line of demarcation there are two valves the aortic and the pulmonary valve are representatives of the aorta of the arterial end of the loop the more posteriorly if not exactly the venous end of the loop the other two valves that come close to it namely the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary and the mitral valve are behind this but remember after the loop is formed fibromuscular material which is something similar to our modern day cement concrete it makes sure that all these are plastered together and they don't move apart this is called fibromuscular skeleton of the heart now this is a very important point you must remember as far as clinical problems are concerned because as long as the defect that occurs is inside the septum interatrial or interventricular and it is away from this junction this is called the valvular zone this okay the problem is not that very dangerous but if the pathology occurs in this valvular zone pathology of one valve is bound to affect the pathology of the adjacent valve you see for example if the aortic valve is damaged the likely that the adjacent side the mitral valve is also affected because these two share a common uh, interface or a wall you see so this is something you have to keep in mind more closer to the endocardial cushion more the chances of multiple congenital anomalies in the same infant right so the problem becomes more and more acute more and more dangerous if the defects in development occurs in the territory of the end because this whole thing is endocardial cushion technically next 
this is the actual dissection I'm showing. OK, uh, this is the to recapitulate. This is the right auricle. This whole thing is the right sorry, right atrium. Correct. This is the cross section of the right ventricle. You can see this is the tricuspid valve and these are the chordae tendinae. These are the papillary muscles. Note in particular, there is one particular papillary muscle going down here and then coming out here and then going to the opposite wall. This is a very important uh, uh, bundle which transmits a um, yeah, specialized uh, muscle tissue called the uh, right branch of the um, uh, conducting system. Okay, we call it the bundle of his. It divides into a right branch and a left branch. And this lump of muscle that transmits it from the septal wall to the lateral wall uh, is uh, is an important band you need to keep in mind. I'll I'll bring about the relevance of this uh, slide a little later. Now you see other pathologies in this region: tricuspid atresia. See what watch watch carefully. I will just highlight this region. The tricuspid valve is not formed at all, you see. Just use your imagination, simple scientific common sense. If there is no valve, how do you expect the blood to go from the right atrium to the right ventricle? Not possible. Therefore, invariably, there is going to be an ASD. Because of the ASD, it will run from a right uh, atrium to the left. So you will have a right to left shunt, all without going into the lung. As a result, this will be a very classic case of severe, very severe cyanotic heart disease, blue baby syndrome, cyanotic heart disease. Next, likewise, just like you have tricuspid atresia, as I showed in the previous one, there, are, there can also be a mitral atresia. This region may be completely underdeveloped or totally blocked, in which case it's called the mitral atresia. Along with mitral atresia, invariably there will be a hypertrophy of the left, left ventricle or musculature, such a huge muscle mass that there is hardly any lumen left and the flow to the aorta is threatened and aorta is also like a small thread, thin thread. Imagine aorta is a huge chamber, huge tube conveying every single drop of blood that has to go into the systemic circulation.